of the second group, Group B's Round Robin. Yeah, it's getting late here in Korea already, 7 p.m. We started at 2 p.m. today, but it's all going to come down to this match. The only way that a tiebreaker can be forced, as we mentioned before, is if Mustang, who's going up against CNL, can 2-0 them and get three points. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a pretty big upset if that happens, uh, as CNL has looked really strong the entire uh, group. And, you know, it's just shown some of the most professional play. Um, and also, I think Ken on Sky is going to be like the big key. They do ban Sky themselves, actually. Whoa. It's less than a ban, so we could see a really unique lane hero coming out because these have been the two dominant uh, laning heroes for all of Group B. Yeah. Susa doesn't waste any time picking Arden. I think that's, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Scarf is like that obvious other choice. We've seen a lot of Ringo, but Scarf also. It looks like a fantastic selection. Almost thinking about going for um, Fox, but it's going to end up with Scarf, and it's going to be a Scarf mirror. So those are the top three, right? Celeste, Sky, and Scarf right now, and that is going to be what we see at the end of all things. It's going to be Zarks again also on Scarf. The best Scarf we've seen today. We have not yet seen Ken Scarf. Those who could be an even better Scarf. Uh, but time yeah. will tell. You know, I'm very happy that Wong has moved back to that Kashka. We saw a fantastic Kashka from him in the first matchup of the day uh, when they did go up against TVT. And this time they send Zarks back to the lane where he looked fantastic on the scarf, as you said. So I think this is going to be the best chance, I'd say, for Mustang to take two games in a row. Yeah, it's, it's going to be the right kind of composition that they're going to need to win with. Yeah, and the right players on the right heroes as well. Scarf looks so cute when he sends that fire out with that skin. I missed it. I wasn't looking at the zoom in, actually. Oh, I'm going to have to do it next time. So, all right, we're going to see a little bit of an engage here. Well, very aggressive in, uh, invade by CNL. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is going to work out, as we do see Zarks is coming back, and they're going to have to leave. Yeah, Zarks wants to cut him off. All the while, Ken is staying in lane, just trying to get as much farm as possible. That's what he does. We are going to see Leo, or excuse me, Lolly, try to um, juke back in to survive. It's not going to happen. Um, but if you look at the total gold, it's still pretty similar, considering that Ken got all that extra farm. He's also going to be a level up, which means he can bully Zarks a little bit here. That's why Leo comes into the lane as well. No opportunities, though. Yeah, and I mean, Zarks is going to be okay after all. I think it would have been better if uh, Lolly just jumped away rather than jumping right back into the fight. I think he would have gotten away pretty easily and would have burned a lot of time for Zarks. But uh, going down there, I think, is uh, not the best situation for sure. Yeah. Also showing, by the way, on the left side, you can see this uh, oddly shaped tablet. Um, almost looks like it was... Like it's a, a triangle tablet. It almost looked like it was in portrait mode for a second, but it looks like it's basically a square. It's not even rectangular. Um, it's pretty cool to see, like, we've got all sorts of devices to play on. So I'll let me like, that's an iPad. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> like, it's not the you same You know, I shape. think it is an iPad, seeing the uh, little button there on the right. It could be the new iPad, the really big one. I don't think that's Does that even yet. come out? No. I think, it I think it's just, like, the angle with which we are looking at that iPad. Yeah, maybe. You know, looks like a square just because it's within a rectangle, but actually it's just a rectangle itself. Have you ever seen those optical illusions? Yeah, we're getting really philosophical here. Um, are we really? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. We're getting really geometrical here. Yeah, that's better. That's fine. I mean, that's what happens. Um, one thing to note, I said that Mustang has to win two games. That is, they need to win both games. Like, they can't just win one, because then they'll only have four points, and CNL will have seven. So keep that in mind. They need to win both here. So uh, everything on the line for them to take two games against the best team and uh, in this group, for sure. Yeah. That's a pretty even game so far. I mean, Mustang has two kills. Um, but in Bangalore, this is not what's as important as control of the map and that farm. Kills are just one small part of that. They allow you to, they give you a little bit of a gold boost, but they also allow you to control the map, which is what's more important. Yeah, it's really about just taking like small advantages there. Like you kill one person, it opens up like a couple extra minions in the jungle, or you kill the laner, you can push the lane, get some damage on the turret. 
Uh, Zark's got to be careful there. Yeah, he was crossing the vein sword. <laughs> the vein sword? Is that the official name that's that we've just had? That's what I'm coming That's what I'm calling it now. I mean, it, it is in the Vainglory logo, so. Yeah. It, it just makes sense. We are seeing Zarks do this funny build with the, uh, the starting up with the Stormguard banner. Yeah, we saw this actually before out of him. Uh, yeah, out of him and away. out of Wong. That's right. They both do it, which is very interesting. It's, it must be a team-wide phenomenon where they uh, decide they decided that that was the best way to, to play a laner, especially uh, uh, especially Scarf in this case, Scarf, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I just um, can't think of the name. Well, it's been a long day, like we said before. Uh -huh. um, no doubt production is rooting for uh, Codename L in this uh, <laughs> in this scenario, but. Um, Again, Wong stays in the lane. Or excuse me, not Wong. Uh, Ken stays in the lane. It's like Wong's not even laning. <laughs> he's Ken not stays even on in the lane team, right? uh, during all this, but he's still behind in farm because Zarx has been bullying him and also has uh, a Stormguard bot banner, as you mentioned. So things even up in that way. Yeah. Seeing a bit of trading going on. These guys not really trying to do damage to the other guy on the other side of the lane. Mainly just trying to kill the minions as fast as possible so that they can join their teammates and or just set up for the next wave that's coming in. Yeah. A lot of scout traps on Zark's side as well here. So if they ever try to jump on him, it's going to be a little bit tougher. And we do see, you know, the rotation back here to the mid. Ken is somewhat vulnerable, but again, he's staying on his side of the vein sword, keeping it safe. Yeah, it's it's very hard to gank a, a scarf compared to some other guys because even though he has no escape, as long as you play on the outside uh, with your Spitfires, which have an incredibly long range, uh, you should be fine. He also has a pretty solid base movement speed as well. So he's not, he's not Celeste, you know. Look at he can this. Fly. We're gonna be able to sneak this, I believe. Yep. Yeah, but at what cost will they actually be collapsed on? No, not really, it's way too slow. And in fact, Ken comes in so deep that if there were any sort of CC, like this Koshka ult, he would be in some serious trouble. And down he goes, and this is gonna be a nice early lead here for Mustang, securing another kill, as well as, uh, you know, grabbing that gold mine. Yeah, so nicely done for Mustang. Off to a great start here. And uh, going to be able to, uh, you know, go into the jungle of the enemy as well and take all of these minions, be able to recall back without taking too much damage. Looks like C and L are thinking about invading themselves to try to even that up, though. You know, um, something to keep in mind, I just thought of on the overarching scheme of this entire group is if CNL wins, the next game will also be meaningless for Mustang. Yeah. And we'll still have it, but it'll be... It'll still happen. Which that, maybe we'll get some fun picks to come in there. That, that would be, be really, really fun. Because CNL would also... Yeah, it doesn't mean anything secure. for them either. Yeah. So they could actually pick, like, I don't know, like, they could go, like, lane. They do, like, lane Arden. <laughs> they go pedal jungle and saw rope. That's what I want to see. Yeah, I want to see a saw with an Iron Guard contract. Yeah. It's happened before, man, in one of my solo games. This guy, <laughs> he just locks in saw, and that's after the other two people have picked, and we're just like, okay, uh, is he actually going to play Rome saw? And he did, and we lost. And that, that was the end. That's you know, when I, you know, that, that was it. <laughs> that's, when you, that's when you double tapped your home button on your iPad yeah. and swiped that's up and, and closed it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the best stories of the solo queue experiences are when you win with that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. But that almost never happens. Well, it happens occasionally when the other team is much worse. Or someone disconnects, you know. Yeah, that's also happened actually to me. You get like Koshka Rome and <laughs> the other guy just uh, leaves. Good guy. He's like, oh, you know, they have Koshka Rome. I, I, I have to go anyway. You feel you know, bad. I'm going to be late. This has been a really passive game, actually, despite the the uh, gold mine take from Mustang early on. Everything else has been pretty slow paced here. Yeah, just everybody farming up. Nobody doing anything too crazy. There was one invade by CNL, which led to one of their deaths, but that was about it. 
and it's really just going to be up to Mustang to try to play around their gold mine, just try to make sure they can get full completion without leaving it. Yeah. They are taking some damage here, but should be fine. And... Yeah, I feel like they need to try to contest this gold mine. But the problem is just that they're so significantly behind that it's hard to do so. Um, Ken is down on farm. You know, he's 0-2. Zarks has a kill. He's got better items. Um, he doesn't have reflex block, which Ken does. So when yeah, the Artemis I mean, uh, ults come down, this is actually something that could come into play. Yeah, Ken definitely needed it going up against Akashka. He didn't have it the last time that Akashka jumped on him, so he needed to make sure he was ready and able to survive this time around. But you make a good point about the Arden as well. Arden Kashka can be scary. You're not exactly sure where to use that reflex block. Yeah, it's true. There's obviously trade-offs to that as well, but it's one of the scary parts of this comp. Looks like the gold mine is going to complete. There's no contesting. It's got about maybe like 30 seconds left. I can't see it on the main map. Yeah, it's got a minion yeah. candy on it as well. So, I mean, with all the CNL guys just going back or just farming in the jungle, looks like they're just going to give it up. And I think that's the better choice. Usually when it's when you're at this point and the other team has full control over the gold mine it's about to complete, it's like, you can't force it. Even though, as much as you would like to, or you would love to force some mistakes, it's better to just relax, play from behind, try to farm up and catch up as much as possible in other ways. Yeah. Even though it's Leo kind of holding down the lane for a minute and grabbing that CS because everyone had the back for a second. All right, if they're gonna do it, it's gonna be now. We're talking like less than like 20 seconds away from that thing completing. In fact, it's like, it was like five seconds. Yeah, well, it was that. less than 20 seconds. So I mean, I guess wrong. I was still, I was still correct, technically. Yeah. The best kind of correct. <laughs> um, Literally. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, Zark's gonna just be farming back here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that he is. Um, but, you know, this is not an unrecoverable deficit. Yeah, they're approaching 2,000 gold behind CNL is, but, you know, all it takes is a few good fights. Compositionally, uh, I think the better late game, personally, I feel, goes to CNL. I like it better than Koshka. Just really depends on how fed Koshka gets, but Koshka currently at 003. Things are not getting out of control yet. Yeah. I would like her to go for more of a defensive build, just like have some sustain in the team fights where you go broken myth, but generally just more uh, defensive items from there, rather than just going full on offense, trying to jump on a scarf who's gonna have that boost of movement speed and tons of shields from the Arden. Generally doesn't work out past the mid game. And uh, it looks like that's what Juan wants to do. Juan has shown us some really cool um Risky uh, engages with Koshka, some near death experiences um, where he comes out with these incredible plays. We got super hyped um, when he was playing earlier in some of our first matches of the day. But we'll see if uh, if he can show us something like that in this particular game. I mean, he's got that, uh, you know, just going down that crystal path, as you would expect. Still holding on to one pot as well. Looking at his items. Yeah, I'm just looking at all the other items. Everything seems to be pretty standard here. Ken going for a Frostburn first is somewhat interesting. Also, Zark's doing uh, some of the same outside the Stormguard banner, and they completed uh, Broken Myth here. Ken saving up more of that gold has to buy up here, but uh, can't quite get that Broken Myth just yet, funnily enough. Yeah, not quite. Has paid for upgraded boots as well. So, you can see where some of that gold is going. Yeah, it's just uh, helping him maneuver a little bit. We're going to see another fight here as CNL is actually trying to go down and uh, into the jungle, but is going to get caught here by that gauntlet, which is going to be another death for CNL. He gets taken out. Um, Lolly is able to escape, but Ken, during all of this, went back to buy, so was missing some farm, but does have that broken myth, as we're saying now. Um, I worry. I worry for CNL though. The gap is widening. Yeah, they've definitely got to be careful. I, I do like the point you made before about how Rona, I think, is definitely better towards that late game. And 
CNL seems like one of those teams that is very experienced and they understand how to play from behind. That's definitely a skill that you gain from much experience because you need to play a lot as a team and make sure you're not just falling apart as some other teams would, like like TBT, obviously one of these less experienced teams. CNL isn't going to make any rash decisions. They're just going to sit back, say, okay, we're behind, that's fine. You know, we're not out of it yet. Let's just farm up, play solid, and wait for them to make a mistake. Yeah. So, um, just one thing to note is this is often the case with Kashka. He's already level 12, so he's decided to go with the B and the C overdrives. And uh, they're basically um, talking about Mustang as a team, still riding that momentum. And they're not making any big plays, which I kind of like because they have the gold mine controlled. And they're usually putting minion candy on it. I actually missed if they did it this time or not. The minion map's kind of covering. I can't tell. I don't think they did. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Um, but, you know, there's, they have so much coverage. They have so much vision. Like, right now, currently, they have basically have vision of all three heroes with those scout traps. So there's no mystery. They don't have to go down there to defend it. They're going to pressure the lane. If they go, you know, if they leave the lane to defend the gold mine, then they're going to get this turret. Um, and if they, don't, if they just keep pressuring the turret, no one goes down the gold mine. They're going to get the gold mine, which they just did. So they got their second immense payout. And that's when things start to get really scary. Yeah. And that completed right before the Kraken went out. So they got another four gold on top of that. Big money here for Mustang. But, uh, you know, getting that lead further and further ahead. And uh, just going to farm up more. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they can go for here now. Because with the Crucible finished and Rona being quite tanky herself. I mean, she's got that finished Fountain of Renewal. Uh, not going to take too much damage if Wong is going to jump on her. So basically, the only target is Ken, but we've seen this time and time and again where the Casca tries to jump in and, uh, you know, the, the Scarf just gets back, reflex blocks it, has the shield from the Arden as well, and just does not die. And Scarf is one of those heroes that you know, does better the longer you survive. So as long as Arden can keep him up in the back, uh, especially with that Frostburn build as well, he's not going to be anywhere near the front. Uh, I, I could see things going very well for CNL, uh, even even though Mustang is ahead. Well, let's keep a close eye on Susu as well, because Susu, uh, with Gauntlet, she's already shown us some very good Gauntlets uh, in this game in particular. Um, Oh, Whoa. that is a bit. Oh, man. Whoa. And they're just going to YOLO and go for it. And this is going to be a terrible engagement. Down goes Susu's gauntlet defensively here as they just jumped into a pit of spikes. Like, basically, Leo was like, hey, I dropped a gauntlet in the wrong place. You guys want to fight anyway? And Scarf was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, bro, let's do it. That was a terrible fight. And Susu's like, well, that's yeah. not how you do it. You see what I did? That's how you do it. <laughs> Very focused. Very disappointed. <laughs> Leo's like, oh man, I screwed that up big time. Yeah. That was really bad. I can't sugarcoat this for you guys. Like, that was just wrong in every way. Like, it looks like he wanted to engage and he thought he canceled. Like, for those of you guys who play Vanguard, you know, if you click an ability that's targetable like this and you want and you decide you don't want to cast you have to press it again to cancel it and then move again i think he thought he did but he didn't and he was just trying to click forward to move and then he cast it and scarf immediately reacted because that's like his muscle memory to be like oh now i'm gonna cast my ult and then like it was like oh now you guys wasted two ults and you're gonna fight anyways which was like let's be honest it's it's terrible enough to miss two ults like that but then the 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 cherry on top of making bad choices is to engage after that into the other team that has all of their ults available to use defensively against you as the other team is being confused like wait what okay i guess we'll yeah. kill you you know we talked about it time and time and again you just can't force fights in this game it's you gotta take advantage of opportunities and wait until you are in a better spot than your opponents well this is actually one of the like most perfect games we've ever seen you know we're seeing like Basically, Mustang is not making mistakes, and CNL yeah, is making some mistakes, and yeah, they're just like making all the right choices. This, this all is, is much good. better, yeah. And now we're gonna see the uh, Fire Breath come down here. Susu taking a lot of damage, trying to escape. No shield available, using that gauntlet defensively. Nice dodging there by CNL as well. Gonna get Wong here, and that's a, a small victory, their first kill. Looks like they are going to try to save this turret.
Oh, barely. Oh, 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 oh. He was mid smack, or she, she, sorry. Yeah. She was mid smack. Careful. So that's going to be a good trade for CNL. They pick up a kill and they pick up the Kraken. So 500 gold to everybody, only 300 to everyone on Mustang. Of course, Mustang still has massive map control. They are still 4,000 gold ahead, but that could have been much worse than it was. Yeah. So, oh, we got the crazy camera angle. Here we go again. Arden looks pretty cool. You were talking about this skin. It's badass dad skin. Yeah. It's not, it's not family friendly, dad. It's not like, let's watch ABC Family, Dad. Oh, no. It's, it's, it's not like, hey, do you want to go fishing, Dad? <laughs> it's like, hey, do you want to get tattoos with me, Dad? All right? Yeah. Do you want to ride my Harley, Dad? Do you want to watch Spike TV, Dad? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing <laughs> about Spike TV. I don't know why. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, do you want to stay up all night and eat ice cream and cookies, Dad? Like, drink some vodka with me, Dad. Like, <laughs> all right, let's not go I, too I'm far. I think Arden's drink <laughs> Arden's a good father. Okay, he's just you know, <laughs> that kind of dad. He's just a tough guy, Dad. Yeah. So, um, anyways, we went, we went, we got a bit <laughs> carried away there. We're gonna Ooh. see another gauntlet dropped here. This one is again crucible. Hopefully. And oh man, oh, another wasted um, flame breath there from Scarf. Like Arden's son. Total this time. Wasted. <laughs> 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 but this time, they disengaged, they they walked away instead of yeah. just no, engaging really smart. after that. That's um, really smart. You don't want to get too carried away. No. So they're just going to sit back behind their turrets. CNL knows what they got to do. But it doesn't look like Mustang's going to give them much room. They're going to say, hey, uh, we have the advantage. Now we can push. I like getting the mini mine as well. Uh, really going to try to take advantage of this you know, short 45 second window that they have. Yeah. All right, here comes Wong. He's up. He's ready. He's got his ults. All ults online, with the exception of Leo. And here we go. We're going to have that engaged now on the turret. Susu leading the charge. He's waiting for that gauntlet. There it is. Hits Leo directly. He's able to get out of there. Ah, the Scarf ult not able to do a lot of damage. And Susu just still very healthy. Wong doing damage at the right time. And there's the ult. But, you know, Susu's starting to get low. And so is Zarx. And maybe actually this could be the first win that CNL takes in a fight. And part of this comes down to Rona doing so much damage. Oh, yeah, man. still alive here and on the chase. And both Scarfs have gone down. And this is 100% favor CNL here. They want that kill, and they should be able to get it here on Wong. And I th I think that Wong turning around here is the perfect choice, because I think this means Susu can escape. She's just going to simply back. Yeah, what does this mean for CNL, though? What are they going to be able to pick up? There's so many scout traps around here. Of course, the death timers are very, very long, as we are already 22 minutes into this game. Looks like Rona's just going to take a short amount of that farm, a small amount of that farm, and then come back and defend, because well, there are a lot of minions here. Exactly. Leo needs to come home and, and clear this up, because they're getting pushed into their uh, vein crystal turrets back at home. And... Not much accomplished here, but it's the first victory, um, and maybe a chain of victories, they hope. Arden just picked up Breaking Point. Yeah. You don't see that very often, but, I mean, Arden works very well with, uh, well, I mean, I would say that if the B was overdrive, but it's not. Usually, you get, I think it's like 50% more weapon power into your B, but regardless, I mean, you're, you're not gonna die as Arden uh, here, pretty much, as we saw from Sue. So you just don't die in an extended fight when it's this late. So breaking point, you can get up to like 15 stacks. You're, it's it's going to happen. Uh, Arden's getting an infusion. Um, which he's preparing for this. He's getting out of control, man. He's, he's preparing for this Kraken defense. You know, they don't have Sky. You know, they don't have a ton of burst damage. Even Scarf's ult is not going to be able to kill that Kraken as quickly as someone like Sky. So. They have to win a fight and defend Kraken, basically They need perfectly. to force it oh, before it gets to the base. And this is exactly what they're going to try to do. Let's see if they can grab Zarks. Oh, Zarks checks. The gig is up. I thought he wasn't going to check for a second. Me too. I was getting really scared. But he sees it. Susu at the front. Perfect positioning here from Mustang. Double gauntlets going down. 
I'd say the favor, though, definitely going to Mustang, and they still have that Kraken starting to hit on those turrets. And Lolly is trying to do all that life, still trying to do that extra damage, but it's just not enough. Ken is getting very low as well, and they do, uh, you know, do all this without Wong's help. And now uh, it's 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 over. Ken is trying yeah. to stop the Kraken, but it's not going to happen. They can just simply ignore him, and it is going to be. Game one that goes to Mustang, trying to keep their hopes alive. And CNL needs to win the next game if they want to avoid.